cuties and happy new year 2023. I hope this year has begun kindly for all of you and that you have been as flu free as possible during these times. I wanted to kick this year off on my channel with a minor life update. I will afterward talk about the set of icons I'm drawing here, since I do have a thing or two to say about each of them and their progress. First things first, I got a new job as a graphic artist last year around July. That also meant that I needed to move out and change scenery, since my new job is located around the capital area of Finland. Which was huge, since I've been waiting for that to happen ever since I graduated in 2019. Not only did I move last year, but I also got a kitten. Her name is Vanu, and if you follow me on Twitter, you probably have seen her already. Her breed is a Turkish van, and she is the lovely little lady who I love very much. She has sparked much needed company into my lonely life, and given me the perfect chaotic energy that I need. She will be one year old at the end of May, so she is still young but growing quickly each day. Originally, the job I got was meant to last from July until December, but my contract got extended until the end of March. So, I still have roughly three months left at my current job before I need to start looking for a new one. Regardless, I am so happy that I have begun to get experience as a graphic artist, since I prefer that due to its more visually demanding job description. How a graphic artist differs from graphic designer is just... more illustrative stuff? So, as a graphic artist, I am getting much needed work experience with illustrating and visualizing information. That is something I want to get more deeply into in my career. Because of those factors, last year was hectic and thus I fell behind with the videos I wanted to do, since I simply ran out of time for a month or two. Sorry about that. <laughs> On top of that, my computer had a malware scare, which meant I had to put it in a factory reset and... I lost footage for two speed paints that I meant to put out during December. Live and learn, I guess. I'm not too bitter that I lost the set footage for the two individual videos, but it was still a small bummer since I was really excitedly looking forward to them. When things got less hectic in my life, I began to spend the remainder of my time working on yellow pages since I ran out of the pre-made pages when I moved into my new apartment. So that ate at least two months worth of free time from me, as I wanted to keep up with the weekly upload schedule. Thankfully, though, chapter 3 of Yellow is now fully finished. You can read it over at my DeviantArt, since... I haven't had time to expand Yellow anywhere else yet. However, when I do, I already have a good start for a weekly or twice a week schedule for the new readers. And through the mention of yellow, we get to this set of icons that I made. Yellow tree marks the halfway point of the comic. When chapter 2 finished, I did a small mini-series with the main cast by drawing a set of individual yet fitting illustrations. This time, instead of doing four separate videos, I figured I'd stick with one, since headshot drawing in and of itself is very quickly done and would result in a very little content on their own. At this point, I have just decided to stick with these background colors for each of the characters as their highlight colors. Tulip with pink, Sabrina with turquoise, Michael with blue, and Jake with red. I sketched out these headshots within an hour while I was in a meeting at work. That's primarily why Jake doesn't have an angry expression here. I didn't want to explain why he is frowning to a co-worker, if that happened to become a topic. But also, if I happened to use these icons in Toy House, I wanted him to remain neutral. I could have drawn him with a smile just like the rest of the characters, but... Knowing his character and involvement with the comic, 
I figured it may have been too creepy. There is a little fun fact for you all. The way I drew these icons was the way I work on yellow pages. First, I made the sketch traditionally with pen and paper. I like sketching traditionally because it feels more natural for me and helps me get proportions right with less fiddling than digitally. But if something happens to get too small or I need to tweak the sketch, I can still do it digitally afterwards. I actually did this with some of the characters, namely with Sabrina, whose left part of the face just looked a little bit off to me. At the start of the speed paint, or even during it, you probably have seen me flash out the black circle. That circle was a reference to help me figure out where the face would be centered in case I happened to use these icons as actual icons somewhere. As I get the sketch modified and inserted it the way I want it to the canvas, I start the line art process. I lined each of these icons one by one. When the line art was done, I filled in some grey as a placeholder for future colouring. I usually do the pre-filling of the line art during the line art phase. I feel like colouring is much easier to start with when you just select the grey area later when you get back to it. After lining all the heads, I began to colour and shade each character one by one. Tulip was first, and she was the basis for determining what are the different opacity levels and layer modes for each of the upcoming shading and highlight layers. I wanted all the characters to be facing light as if these icons were done in a professional photoshoot. As Tulip's background was pink, I picked pink shading for her. Normally, I would use opposite colors for shading and highlights, but this time I went for warmer toned shading and cooler toned highlights. So both of the shading and highlights are pink here, but just a bit different temperature to bring in the contrast better. And of course, I wanted Tulip to be part of her surroundings, not to be removed from them. All in all, Tulip's icon wasn't much a trouble, and she came together very well in the end. Sabrina wasn't too bad either, except when I was modifying her sketch. Just like with Tulip, Sabrina's shading and highlights are done with different hues of turquoise, just so she fits the surrounding background. Then we come to Michael, who looks deceivingly easy, but whose shading still makes up that extra time that could have been saved because of his fluffiness. I had some trouble getting his nose patch to look right, but in the end, it is looking the best it can right now. Perspective is a funky thing sometimes. Speaking of perspective, I wonder what ran through my mind when I was making these icons. Tulip's slight frog perspective isn't too bad, but with Michael, it was more difficult than necessary. That is also why I was struggling a little bit with his nose splotch, as I was trying to make it look smart without looking weird from such a drastic angle. Oh well, <laughs> at least I figured it out somehow and got his icon finished as well. Jake didn't have any noteworthy issues, except what I spoke about earlier about his neutral expression. It was oddly pretty weird to draw him with such a calm yet reserved demeanor, since I am so used to drawing him as an angry boy. Just like with all before, I used red for Jake's shading to make him fit his background, and that's all for icons of the yellow cast then. I will be uploading these on DeviantArt one by one, just to keep some kind of activity over there. But here you can see them all finished. If you happen to read chapter 3, or yellow in general, Feel free to write comments about your thoughts on the comic. I would love to hear what runs through your mind. Special shout out to my friend Wolf, who helps me with Yellow's grammar. Thank you so much for watching. May 2023 be a good year for all of us. <laughs>